Hey guys, uh, Nelson Virgil here with ExcelMail.com and DiscountedLabs.com. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, but um, I have to say this paper that I read a few weeks ago that was posted on my site, ExcelMail.com, by one of the guys that posts basically every day. He posts all the different papers and articles coming through, um, especially in testosterone treatment and urology. But anyways, this, this paper is really uh, well done. It's a review of all testosterone replacement options here in the United States by two doctors from um, Beth uh, Israel Medical Center in Massachusetts. Very well done um, and very um, it's an excellent summary. So I'm going to go through real quick. You can actually get a copy of this uh, study if you go to excelmail.com. I will be posting the link to that article in the comments section of this uh, video. So, but I'm going to go through only the tables because it's a pretty lengthy um, paper that actually reviews every single uh, product approved in the United States. But before we go, go forward, I want to show a slide uh, on the timeline uh, of all the products that we have in the States that have been approved by the FDA since even the 60s, late 60s, um, the first one, and, and, and this is actually not 100% accurate, uh, is the pellet, which was not called Testopel back then. It was, uh, it was a generic name. Um, the, the patent was um, owned by, by this doctor. But anyways, and the injectables, the cpionate, the testosterone cpionate, enanthate also, uh, propionate, were back, uh, back in the 70s and, and 60s. So it's not a fully, fully uh, accurate. Then uh, as years going by, uh, 1995, um, we, we had the patch, Agroderm, which is no longer really used. It was discontinued on 2021 because of low prescription numbers. And by the 90s, late 90s, we started getting uh, studies um, done with gels, with androgel and testim and so on. Testim, which is uh, a gel, um, was approved around 2002, and um, so was androgel uh, early 2000s. Striant, which is uh, adhesive um, that is put on the on your gums, uh, wasn't very successful, but was approved by 2003 or so. Uh, for Testa, which is another gel, uh, was approved uh, around 2010. Um, um, testosterone enanthate really was approved a lot before, it was, it's shown here in this graph. Now Testa, which is the twice a day nasal uh, spray, was approved uh, around 2014. And Avid, which is a long-acting testosterone and a canoate injection that is called uh, Nevido everywhere else in, uh, outside the United States was approved also around that time. Another gel, which is um, kind of a generic a copy of uh, Androgel and all that, uh, was approved for uh, Bojexo uh, on 2014. So all the gels, came up around uh, from 2000 to 2014 or so, and the, and the uh, nasal spray, which is twice a day. Some people still use it. Uh, Andriol, which is oral, is the oral um, testosterone on the canoate, uh, really was not approved in the States in 2017. That was a Canadian approval. It's now called um, Jatenso. So Jatenso, which are the orals, uh, are being approved since 2019. We started seeing oral uh, testosterone products, and there's Jatenso and Kisaxtrex. I have a problem with that name. Horrible brand name name. Glando, which who pronounces that, also um, recently approved. So we have three orals. And Siostat is uh, a sub-Q, subcutaneous injectable testosterone um, enanthate uh, using a device and this company just um, get, got it approved even though enanthate had been approved many years before but it's basically because um, it is an uh, injection under the skin all right so just wanted to review real quick uh, all the different products we have uh, obviously in the United States we're 
we're lucky to have so many. And obviously, we're not even talking about compounding, uh, compounded uh, testosterone products, uh, injectables and gels and creams and even nasals that are done by compounded pharmacies. So let's go back to the paper, testosterone replacement options, a uh, great review. And we're gonna go to the first table and I'm sorry that I'm scrolling so fast and so much, but um, I, love, I love the tables. This, this doctor took, uh, uh, took a long time to put all this together, I have to say. Um, so they went through um, the urologic um, society and the endocrine society guidelines, two of them. And, and compare them uh, when it comes to recommendations. We have at least, as last time I counted, six guidelines that recommend different ways to manage testosterone replacement. Some of them agree on certain things, but most of them don't agree on most uh, recommendations. So that, that can tell you how variable and how uh, different every group of doctors, urologists and urinologists, uh, really look at um, how the how to start and monitor uh, testosterone replacement. So the guidelines are compared here in two columns. When to measure testosterone to diagnose somebody with low testosterone, they both say it should be in the morning because um, we tend to have higher testosterone in the morning. Fasting, because uh, breakfast um, actually tends to temporarily decrease testosterone blood levels. And twice, both of them agree on that should be two different measurements, two different days, more or less around the same time, maybe 8 a.m., fasted, no breakfast um, for the test. And what is normal testosterone? Now that's when they disagree greatly. The urologists um, say 450 to 600, although I know a lot of urologists are treating patients and um, most of them have over 1,000 nanograms. So this is really uh, guideline recommendations. Some doctors don't follow them, some do. And the Endo Endocrinology Society um, basically says 264 to 916. I guess they got that from databases of maybe LabCorp or Quest Diagnostics. But as you can tell, big discrepancy on what they consider normal testosterone. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is low testosterone? Um, the urologists say less than 300 nanograms or, or deciliter. The endocrinologists do say 264. It's really, you know, as I said, most insurance companies probably go for 300, 350 to determine whether or not they're going to pay for your testosterone product that insurance companies are, um, are you know, will, will cover. <clears throat> And the aim of a treatment is to get you to a testosterone level that's middle tertile of normal. This guy's here on the endo side said mid normal range for young men. And both obviously agree that it's about improvements in low testosterone symptoms and signs, which is fatigues, low sex drive, low mood, um, you know, et cetera. And when do they want to see you again for a follow up? Um, the urology is one to four weeks, so it's, it's flexible. And the endo say, uh, well, we want to see you uh, three months after you start uh, to reevaluate and see your blood levels of different things. And the long-term follow-up, they both agree to see the patient at uh, month uh, six, uh, 12 months. And after that, I think uh, nobody really specifies, but most patients are only being uh, seen maybe twice a year to get their refills. <clears throat> Excuse me about that. We're going to fall, well, I'll scroll down. <clears throat> and I didn't really know, to be honest with you, I've been in the field for almost 25, 30 years. I didn't know that every manufacturer uh, has a, a very specific recommendation on when to uh, measure testosterone um, when you're using the product. <clears throat> Uh, Androgel, the most common, the most um, popular, uh, the uh, gel prescribed, um, they, they recommend to, if you're going to measure your testosterone level, just to see how well the gel is working, do it in the morning before you apply the next, obviously, daily application, so before you apply the next, the next dose. Testing is another gel for Testa 2, it's 1 and 2%. Um, testing says morning before the next application. Uh, for test that says two hours after the application. So as you can tell, they're already disagreeing there. 
and Vol Volgelso, I have another problem with his brand name, uh, Predos, which is really the same as one and two. Uh, patches, um, two hours after application, nobody really uses them anymore. This is a nasal um, spray uh, twice a day. So they're telling you two hours after application, I guess, of either one of those um, twice a day do uh, doses. Or um, the oral Jatenso uh, capsules, six hours after the morning dose is a twice a day product. Pellets, uh, Testopel, end of dosing interval, meaning doctors may wait for 10 to 12 to 14 weeks for you to get the next set of uh, pellets put in your, under your skin. So they're not really even telling the doctors where, when to actually take a blood sample <clears throat> because doctors um, follow different rules. Um, intramuscular injections, the enanthate and cipionate, uh, all products that was probably as, as popular as Androgel. Um, when to measure testosterone midway between two injections. Some guys are injecting uh, once a week. Some doctors are still prescribing testosterone every two weeks. Um, some other people are injecting twice a week. So it's midway between two injections. That's a good way to say it. Depend, no, no matter what uh, injection uh, frequency you are using, you, they want you to measure testosterone midway between the two injections. The Cyostat, which is subcutaneous testosterone, they can wait with a device. They tell you uh, they want to measure through concentrations, the lowest concentration, seven days after the most recent dose, after following six weeks of dosing. And I do believe, uh, and most of them should have said that, to at least follow six weeks of dosing uh, to reach steady state of testosterone in your blood before measuring testosterone because um, it takes that long uh, for most products to have a more stable blood level in your blood. <clears throat> so that's that's what Seistet says. The long-acting testosterone and the canoid, the Nevido is called a bead in the United States. They want they want you to test midway between between uh, the 12, 12, 10 week injection. So people, basically doctors are prescribing to 750 milligrams of a bead every 10 weeks. So they, they are telling doctors, well, um, every 10 weeks. So at the fifth week, uh, test the person's testosterone blood levels just to see if you need to increase or decrease uh, the dose. <clears throat> this, are, this is, uh, this is actually very interesting, and I think it's under-reported. Um, uh, the doctors, actually, the, the writers of this paper, uh, went to goodrx.com, a website that many of us use to get a better pricing on all kinds of uh, medications. And they saw, uh, they compared the prices, the 30-day the cost, the monthly cost of testosterone and anthate, um, and five, mill five, five milliliter vial, Cupionate, uh, four milliliter vial, which um, uh, I guess is four one milliliter vials because it comes in different ways, in different um, vial sizes. So 11 to $22 a month, super cheap. The Cipionate and Edenthase are cheap, um, uh, really relatively, even if you're paying. And these are out of pocket costs, by the way. This is not insurance co pays. This is what you would have to pay out of pocket, although this one's here. I'm not 100% sure, but it's probably out of pocket too, although they seemed a little too low uh, to believe that. The Androgel and the, the pump, uh, I definitely know this is not the cost. This is more like uh, $500, $650. So this, is, this must be copay uh, or coupon prices. Um, so, you know, as you can tell, most gels are running more or less the same, up to 400 but I would say Six hundred dollars is probably what I've seen. Six fifty a month. Natesto a little cheaper. Uh, Siostead uh, also. They're more or less prices same. Every gel and every other product have price themselves to compete with um, with the other options. Um, Androgel and Jatenso is um, showing here very expensive. The oral uh, capsule um, twice a day. So that's interesting, very interesting. Nobody had really 
put a table like that together. Although, as I said, I think all those prices, most of them seem a little low, but I haven't done my, my homework uh, to, to verify. So we're gonna keep going. Um, yeah, and the daily dosing um, milligrams. Uh, this is also very interesting. Um, the nasal um, spray is 11 milligrams um, twice a day. Uh, or three, I'm sorry, three times a day. I've been saying twice a day. I apologize. It's three times a day. So 33 milligrams a day uh, dosing. The pellets could be <clears throat> uh, anywhere from 150 to even 600. So this, this is not completely uh, accurate. But these are the milligrams per day, the patch, the injections. So basically comparing the milligrams per day of uh, the formulation. I'm not saying of testosterone per se because every product, product had different percentage um, uh, and bioavailability of the testosterone, okay? So don't get too confused. This is a very busy uh, table. I'm not gonna go through it fully because otherwise most of you will get bored and will drop out. By the way, subscribe to my Excel Mail channel on YouTube. Um, I tend to do reviews like this uh, of papers and articles um, and you know, these videos are great for nerds that can actually, uh, that enjoy data. I'm not going to give you uh, videos on my opinions on things as much as review of papers like this one, because I think most of us need to see, uh, the work that some doctors have been doing to summarize what's going on out there. So this is just a summary. You can access it through the link I'm providing in the description below, uh, for, uh, Excel mail that this table basically com not only mentions the formulations, <clears throat> the mode of delivery, the dose, the starting dose, because a lot of products require starting dose um, before you actually titrate up the application site. So it's a very, very good table that summarizes, especially for physicians and, and patients that want to be more uh, aware of all the options um, out there. So anyways, this is the end of the video. I'm gonna be doing two more like this. There's some really exciting uh, data that have been coming out lately from the, the urology world. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Subscribe to excelmail.com. Go to, um, also I have a Facebook group called Testosterone Replacement Discussion. Uh, there are 28,000 guys there. And on Excel Mail, we have over 45,000 uh, men uh, sharing a lot of information daily. So hope everybody does well and hopefully see you guys soon. Bye-bye.